Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to invest or how to practice investing today anyway. My students will often tell me that I told them about tax-free savings accounts and RSPs and non-registered accounts and, and you should invest when you're young, but they often ask me, how do you actually invest? And so I had them use Quest Trade's practice account to show them how how simple it is to actually invest on their own. And so today I'm just gonna show you or walk you through how to use Questrade's practice account. This is how I started years and years ago. So if you just Google Questrade practice account, it'll take you to this page and then just fill in those boxes. And once you've filled in all those boxes, just click on get started. It'll prompt you to this page where it gives you a user ID and your password. If you're going to be practicing with this for a, for a little while, um, write this down so you always have it and most of the time students just take a picture of it and so they always have it with them on their phone click on the login and then enter the username and the password that was given and then select login you'll see this opening screen it'll um, ask if you want a quick tour and if you just um, click next and you can scroll through it or you can click the skip button and it'll take you to this page here and it says that this is just a practice account now the nice thing about this practice account is everything is real life except all the market data is 24 hours old. So it'll take you to this page and this is exactly how I see my screen. So I trade with Questrade, that's one of my, my brokerage accounts. And this is the exact screen that I use. This is based off of a an older version. I do, did not like the upgraded version. So I did switch back to an older version that they had. I really like the layout of this. I, I thought the new layout was overly simplistic and, and didn't really like the layout. So I was able to revert back to this exact screen. So this is exactly what I see when I log into my trading platform. And you can see on this page, it's in the balances. And so it tells you that you have um, $500,000 in cash in Canadian dollars and $500,000 in USD. And again, as of 24 hours ago from the recording of this video, um, if I converted all of that into Canadian dollars, you'd have just over 1 million. And if I converted all of that into USD, it's just under a million dollars. And Questrade allows you to hold both Canadian dollars and US dollars. You can see in the top right, it's our margin account. That is a traditional non-registered account. If you select on it, you have a practice margin account and a practice RRSP account you get the same amount of money in both of these accounts. So it doesn't matter which one you play around with. There's no tax consequences. This is all virtual. This is not real. You can create as many watch lists as you want, just like on the real platform. So you here you can have the, see the Dow Jones and the, and the S&P 500 and the TSX and the TSX 60, a whole bunch of different indexes that you're probably not too worried about. But if you wanted to, you could look up a stock, let's say Royal Bank, I pick on Royal Bank all the time because it is Canada's largest company. So Royal Bank's ticker is RY. If you don't know what the ticker is, you can just type in Royal Bank into the box there or Apple or Google or whatever you want. Just keep in mind that in real life, you're probably putting in Canadian dollars. And if you do buy an American company traded in um, on the US stock exchanges, that there will be fees for converting those. Now, when I type in RY, there's a whole bunch of things here. This is Royal Bank, that's their ticker, but this is on the New York Stock Exchange. So this is the American dollar ones. This is not the one you wanna trade. In real life, you probably have your Canadian dollars. So you wanna find the ry.to, the to means on the Toronto Stock Exchange, the TSX, the Toronto Stock Exchange. That is the one that you're looking for. So if you click on that, you can see all the information here. The key, I guess, when trading is your bid and your ask. Bid is basically, the best deal that you can sell your stock for and ask is sort of the best deal that you can buy your stock for at the moment. And this, the difference between the bid ask is your, is called the bid ask spread. You want to try to have that as close as possible. So you can see there's a, about a three cent difference out of $128. So you're looking at a very low bid ask spread. This just means that the company is being traded very often. It's very liquid. There's a lot of people buying and selling this, this stock. It's so it's fairly easy to purchase and you're not losing a lot of money buying and selling this stock. If there is a large spread, you might want to be careful about buying it. There's already a risk when you buy it and then you have to sell it for a lot less. 
you are already losing a certain percentage of your money. Other stuff in this in this graph, you can see the growth of it. This is over one day. If you click on the five days, this is how Royal Bank has done over five days and 15 days and year to date. So since January 1st and then over one year, one calendar year, how, how has it done over the long term? And you can see Canadian banks have done really well in the last while. Your high and your low is just how how expensive the stock has gotten during this the day that you're looking at and the low is how low the stock price has gotten during the, the current day the open is when the stock market opened what was the price of this the royal bank stock and the previous close was what was the price of the stock when the stock market closed the previous day and the yield here you can see the canadian banks have been offering a great dividend and you can see that currently the royal bank is offering about a 4.05 percent dividend and you can see the pe ratio here and i'm not going to talk much about that and honestly i'm not going to talk about much more than this i'll let you explore all the different things here but let's say you wanted to buy royal bank stock how do you do it there's a lot of different ways you could just type in ry.to right here uh, and it'll take you there you could just click the buy sell here and it'll take you to this screen on the right. Uh, you can just click on the ask and it'll automatically fill everything in. So again, you're looking at this ask price. So $128.06 currently to buy this stock. And let's say you had, um, I don't know, $10,000 and you wanted to put it all onto Royal Bank. I am not saying you should buy Royal Bank. This is not an endorsement to buy Royal Bank. I'm just using this as an example. So what you'll do is, You'll take out a calculator and um, let's say again you have $10,000 and you divide that by the current ask price. You can see it's now dropping down to $127.98 and it tells you that you can buy $78.1372 .78 and so you cannot purchase um, fractional shares as of yet. I know some companies are offering fraction, fractional shares but right now at the time of this recording there's no fractional shares available on Quest Trade's platform. So you have to buy 78. If you bought 79, you'd exceed your $10,000. You don't have $10,000, so you have to go just below it. So you would purchase 78. So in the quantity here, you would just type in 78. In the order type, again, um, there's lots of different things in here. Um, the two that you'll probably want to focus on are the, the limit and the market. Honestly, I, I purchase ETFs for the most part. I like that, the simplicity, the instant diversification. And so I just go with the market. So market basically says whatever the stock or the ETF is currently valued at, I just want to buy it right now. I'm busy. I've probably got some students coming in soon or something like that. I just want to buy it. Whatever it is right now, I'll take it. So if you do the, the market, I just want to buy the end of the day. I, now I just press buy. I look at all this information here. You can see that I'm going to buy just under $10,000 worth of our Royal Bank. There is a $4.95 fee. So Quester charges one cent per share, but the minimum is $4.95 and the maximum is $9.95. So you're going to get it charged if you purchase a stock, an individual stock, you're going to get charged between five and $10 basically. ETFs are free to purchase and I'll show you that in a second. So in total, you're losing not quite $10,000. Just click on send order and you can see at the bottom that I bought 78 shares of Royal Bank for an average of $127.88. Now if I go to I click on account and go to positions, you'll see that I have Royal Bank, I bought 78 of them. I haven't sold any. The average price I bought them for was $127.88. The price right now is $127.88. And so I've actually lost $4.68 on my purchase already, which is no big deal. It's going to fluctuate, especially in, in, when you first invest. You can change what's um, on, on this column by clicking these three bars. I generally like to see what I lost and gained overall and I generally like to see what I lost and gained over a day and so those, those are the two that I like to click on. You can play around with all of these different things that you can put into your tables and you can see that I'm down 0.08 overall and I'm down 0.09 now um, just today and those are gonna be the same because I, I just started investing today. So if I wanted to buy another um, let's say I buy an ETF. Um, I don't know. Let's choose XEQT. Again, not promoting any stock or ETF here, just using some examples. So type it in and then just click on it, the .to. 
version. And you can see I can buy this ETF. And if you don't know what an ETF is, I'll have videos explaining what ETFs are and how to, how to get it, a diversified portfolio and all that sort of stuff. And then if I click on ask, and then let's say I wanted to buy $10,000 worth of XEQT. So type into 10,000 divided by the $25.81. And it shows that I can buy 387 shares. Now I'm going to keep it as a limit. And so what this means is I can choose the price I want to purchase or um, sell at. And in this case, I want to buy it. And let's say I'm going to wait for a deal. Let's say I, I bring this down to, I don't know, let's say $25. I'm going to wait for until, 20, until it comes down to $25. I think the stock market's going to crash. I've just got this feeling. And so when I press buy, you can see now there's no fees because Questrade offers no fee um, buying and selling with, with ETFs. And it's just under $10,000. Now when I send the order, nobody's selling it to me at that price. And now I told the program that I'm gonna wait till the end of the day. If no one sells it to me for $25, by the end of the day, it's gonna give me that $10,000 back in cash and I'm gonna have to purchase it later. Generally, you, you leave it as whatever the ask price is there. I used to. Um, go up two or three cents. Questrade would would buy it at the best price anyway, so I just I would just up that a little bit. But I, I again I just find market being really easy. And you can see it if you go to account and then go to your orders. You can see that I have XEQT here. The it's been accepted. It knows that I want to buy three hundred eighty seven dollars or three hundred eighty seven shares for twenty five dollars, but nobody's bought it yet. And so we're just waiting to see if someone will sell that to me at $25. So that's how easy it is to play around with um, Questrade's platform. It's, it's really user friendly. It's nice that they have this practice account. This is how I started. And it really, when I started to play around with this, I thought, man, investing is actually really boring. I want more to happen. I want to see more things happen. But investing should be boring. It should be a slow, slow and steady ride. You shouldn't be day trading or anything like that. And uh, it's just a really good thing that they have provided to everybody so that you can get comfortable with the buying and selling of stocks and ETFs and all that sort of stuff. I hope this video has helped you think about trying to play around with investing. And if you did enjoy this video and you would like to stay up to date with some of my other ones, just hit subscribe below. Have a wonderful day.